my fellow Americans. Today, I'm talking to you about a serious problem plaguing the nation. Despite the Institute of Medicine's report to Air is Human, we continue to have medical errors. These medical errors lead to morbidity and more pat mortality in hospitals and clinics throughout the nation. The Air Force has its share of these medical errors. The Air Force has instituted Team Steps. Team Steps is a great program. You all have been through this program in the past, and this is a refresher. I ask you to redouble your efforts and work with me to embrace the Team Steps concepts to improve our communication and really work as a team in order to improve communication so we can decrease these medical errors. I've been involved in the Team Steps since it was introduced into the Department of Defense. I've also chaired the Air Force Medical Malpractice Board for two years. Every time we make a medical error, communication is a huge part of that. So I ask everybody, no matter what your position on the team, you are important. You are important to help us decrease these medical errors. Please make your voice be heard. The, one of the best ways to do that is through this Team Steps program. I know you can just blow through the videos, watch them, and check the block, but for our patients' sake, I need you to take this seriously, and I'm asking you as, the, as your commander, please use these tools, refresh yourself on them, and make the commitment to help our patients through the Team Steps approach. My fellow Americans, this is a grave crisis we're facing, and I sincerely ask you to join me on this quest. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tech Sergeant Victor Malone, and welcome to your annual Team Steps Refresher Training. We're going to start out by reminding you what Team Steps is. What is Team Steps? Team Steps stands for Team Strategies and Tools to Enhance Performance and Patient Safety. What is a team? A team is a minimum of two or more individuals assigned to a specific roles and tasks with common purpose and shared goals that are interdependent actions among members. Team steps are composed of team huddles, debriefs, feedback, two challenge rule, the desk script, SBAR, check back, handoff, call out, and cross monitoring. Now we will watch a video describing how a team comes together and is formed. So Dr. Placey, what do you think? Um, I'm not sure, but I want to rule out a heart attack. Would you like us to go ahead and do a whole cardiac workup? Yes, a full cardiac workup. Contact me once it's completed and if there's any changes in his status. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Sergeant oh, Presto, I am going to need some assistance. We have Mr. Price in this room. He's a 42-year-old male. He originally came in for some heartburn type symptoms for four to five days, which hasn't been improving. Dr. Placey has uh, some concerns that potentially he may have had a heart attack, so we're instructed to do a whole cardiac workup. Went ahead and completed some vital signs. Uh, did the EKG, placed him on the monitor, and placed some oxygen on him, but he still needs an IV and the cardiac panel. Would you be able to start the IV and draw the cardiac panel and deliver it to the lab? Sure, ma'am. I'm going to go ahead and start an IV on Mr. Price and draw a cardiac panel and deliver those tubes to the lab, and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Perfect. Thank you.
In the video you just watched, you saw the fundamentals of forming a team. Effective team members are able to predict needs of team members, provide quality information and feedback, engage in higher level decision making, skillful at managing conflict, they understand their roles and responsibilities, they reduce stress on team members as a whole through better performance. Next, we're going to learn about leadership. There are two types of leaders in the team, the designated and situational. The designated leader is the person assigned to lead and organize a designated core team. They establish clear goals, facilitate open communication and teamwork among all team members. The situational leader is any team member who has the skills to manage the situation at hand. Effective team leaders. They help organize the team, articulate clear goals, make decisions through collective input of the members, empower members to speak up, challenge only when appropriate, actively promote and facilitate good teamwork, and be skillful at conflict resolution. Delegation. Methods of redistributing tasks and or assignments. It is important to delegate properly. Process includes four steps. Decide what to delegate, decide whom to delegate to, communicate clear expectations, and request feedback, also known as closed loop communication. Promoting and modeling teamwork. Effective leaders cultivate desired team behaviors and skills through open sharing of information, role modeling and effective cueing team members to employ prescribed teamwork behaviors and skills, constructive and timely feedback, and facilitation of the team huddles, debriefs, and conflict resolution. The debrief. The purpose of the debrief is to identify strengths and opportunities for improvement of team performance. A debrief includes three main points, an accurate reconstruction of key events, analysis of why the event occurred or a recap, and what should be done differently next time. This is where you would bring in your constructive criticism. Facilitating conflict resolution. Effective leaders facilitate conflict resolution techniques through invoking the two challenge rule and the desk script. This helps team members master conflict resolution techniques and also serves as a mediator. In this video, we will show you a scenario on ineffective leadership and how it affects the unit. Oh, you have a pretty big bruise. Let me take yeah. a look at your other arm. Hey, what are you doing? Are you trying to draw blood out of a bone? You might want to freaking think about that. You suck, and whoever trained you sucks too. Hey, where are all the butterfly needles at? As you saw in the scenario, Sergeant Blackburn, the lab supervisor, was very abrasive towards the technician. This affected the unit's communication. Next, we'll discuss situation monitoring. Situation monitoring is a process of actively scanning behaviors and actions to assess elements of the situation or environment. It fosters mutual respect and team accountability. It provides safety net for team and patient and includes cross-monitoring. Cross-monitoring is the process of monitoring the actions of other team members for the purpose of sharing workload and reducing or avoiding errors. Cross-monitoring is also a mechanism to help maintain accurate situation awareness and it's watching each other's back. Situation awareness is the state of knowing the current conditions affecting the team's work, such as the status of a particular event, the status of a team's patient, or operational issues impacting the team. Conditions that undermine situation awareness are failure to share information with the team, request information from others, direct information to specific team members, include patient or family in communication, utilize resources fully, and documentation. A shared mental model is the perception, understanding, or knowledge about a situation or process that is shared among team members through communication. And in this video, we will discuss situation awareness. 
Yeah, so my baby's five pounds, six ounces now, but he's been sick, so... He's sick again? Yeah. Excuse know. me. Hey, Major Clella, uh, why is she still asleep? You know, you, you got your gas on. This scenario demonstrated how situational awareness by the staff can enhance patient care. Examples of when to share include team huddles, debriefs, shift changes or breaks, and transitions in care locations. Next, we'll talk about mutual support. Mutual support is the essence of teamwork. It protects team members from the work overload situations that may reduce effectiveness and increase the risk of error. Task assistance. Team members foster a climate where it is expected that assistance will be actively sought and offered as a method for reducing the occurrence of an error. In support of patient safety, it's expected. Types of feedback can be formal or informal. Constructive feedback is considerate, task specific, and focuses attention on performance and away from the individual, provided by all team members as well. Evaluative feedback helps the individual by comparing behavior to standards or to the individual's own past performance. Most often, it's used by an individual in a coaching or mentoring role. The characteristics of good feedback are, it has to be timely, behavioral, specific, directed towards improvement, or constructive criticism. It helps prevent the same problem from occurring in the future. It also needs to be considerate. Feedback is where the learning occurs. In this next video, there's a scenario about task assistance. Airman Steinkellner, have you been able to send out that MMQC message to all the med group units? Yes, ma'am. I'll do that right away. Okay, thank you. Man, this is so ridiculous. I have so much to do. Hey, Steinkellner, I can help you with that email. Yes, please, that would help out a lot. As you saw in this scenario, Airman Co. was able to use good cross-monitoring skills to help Airman Steinkellner with their overwhelming task. Advocacy and assertion. Advocate for the patient is invoked when team members' viewpoints don't coincide with that of the decision makers. Assert a corrective action in a firm and respectful manner. Get attention express concern and state the problem, and then propose a solution. There are many conflict resolution options. Here in Team Steps, we're going to cover two. In a cognitive conflict, two individuals have different information, not seeing eye to eye. In this situation, we would use the two challenge rule, where you challenge at least twice. In an effective conflict, there is a hostile or harassing behavior. In this situation, we would use the desk script. The two challenge rule, used when an initial assertion is ignored, it is your responsibility to assertively voice concern at least two times to assure it has been heard. The member being challenged must acknowledge. If the outcome is still not acceptable, take a stronger course of action. Utilize your supervisor or chain of command. And please use cuss words. Yes, this is the one situation where we want you to cuss, and here is how. I am concerned, I am uncomfortable, and this is a safety issue. These are challenges you can use to get your point across to potentially save a life or prevent harm to a patient. Conflict Resolution Desk Script A constructive approach for managing and resolving conflict. The D stands for Describe the Specific Situation. The E Express your concerns about the action. S is for suggest other alternatives, and C, consequences should be stated. Ultimately, consensus shall be reached. Collaboration is the desired end result in conflict resolution. It achieves a mutually satisfying solution resulting in the best outcome. Everybody wins, both members, the team, and the patient, and includes commitment to a common mission. Remember, True collaboration is a process, not an event. Next, we'll be discussing communication. Communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals, departments, or organizations. Communication is the lifeline of the core team. 
Effective communication permeates every aspect of an organization. Effective communication needs to be complete, clear, brief, and timely. One needs to communicate all relevant information, convey information that is plainly understood, communicate the information in a concise manner, and offer and request information in an appropriate time frame. SBAR. SBAR provides a framework for effective communication. And SBAR stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. Situation, what is going on with the patient? Background, what is the clinical background or context? Assessment, what do I think the problem is? And recommendation, what would I recommend? Call out is a strategy used to communicate important or critical information. It informs all team members simultaneously during emergency situations and helps team members anticipate the next steps. Check back as a type of closed loop communication. The sender initiates the message. The receiver accepts the message and provides feedback confirmation. And the sender verifies the message was received. In this video, we will discuss communication. Hello, Mrs. Green. How are you today? Good. Hello. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and put this patient napkin on you. So here you go. You can just go ahead and put them on when the doctor comes in. Okay. And she'll be right in. All right. Good morning, Mrs. Green. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. That's wonderful. So do you know what we're doing today? Yes, you're going to remove the molar. Okay. So it looks like we're taking out number 19 on the bottom left. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we are going to go through our universal protocol list today. So what is your birthday? It is March 10th, 1975. Wonderful, and we have Jane Green in our chair. And our x-ray, does it say Jane Green? Uh, yes. Okay, so we are going to be taking out tooth number 19 today. All right, so let's open up. Fabulous. Okay, so we're taking out tooth number 19. Take a look at the x-ray, make sure it's all pulled up. Um, actually, it says we're taking out tooth number three. I don't think that's right. Okay. You know what? Yeah, I think it's upside down. That's a good catch. You know, that's why we do our checklist. We're, we are doing the bottom left, aren't we? Yes. Yes, yes. So that's a picture of the top right. So why don't you flip that over? Okay. Oh, that makes so much more sense. OK. What is a handoff? A handoff is the transfer of information and knowledge along with authority and responsibility among care providers at all levels of care transitions and across the continuum of care. Here are some examples of communication challenges. They include language barrier, distractions, physical proximity, personalities, workload, varying communication styles, conflict, lack of verification of information, and shift change. This concludes your annual Team Steps Refresher training. What we would like you to do is to be able to take the tidbits that you've learned back to your units and apply them. We already do a, an extremely good job at taking care of our patients every day. We just want to accentuate from going from that excellent patient care that we do to that simply outstanding patient care. We strive every day to make sure that the quality of care is at an optimum level. From the housekeepers all the way up to the commander, we have a very vital role when it comes to patient safety. We are leading the way when it comes to Team Steps in this arena. We need to make sure that on a daily basis that we are applying these concepts. We need to be able to hone our skills and to be able to be flexible with each patient that walks through our door. We, at this medical group, have the potential of touching thousands of lives on a, on a yearly basis. And we need to make sure that we are not only current in what we do, but we're competent. Here are some final words from our commander. Thank you for watching the Team Steps training. And hopefully, you will take the lessons that you have learned and apply them to the daily work 
that you do at the 48th Medical Group. We, the leadership team of the 48th Medical Group, encourage you to take the principles of Team Steps and apply them to all the activities that you do here at the 48th Medical Group. They will help decrease errors that we do daily and these decreasing errors will not only make for better workflow, they will decrease errors and make for more efficient use of what we do and a safer place here at Lake and Heath. I encourage you to take these principles with you if you PCS or separate as they, they are applicable everywhere that we do any type of medical care. Because remember, only you can prevent medical errors.